Hi, this is Kelly Hill, technology reporter for RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Dr. Oli Downs, who is chief scientist for Globus, which is a contextual marketing company that focuses on big data analytics for mobile operators. Welcome, Oli. Thank you, Kelly. Glad to have you here today. Uh, we are going to be talking about big data analytics and marketing and uh, how these things are kind of changing the game in terms of what mobile operators are able to do and, uh, and what they'd like to do. Um, so maybe you can start us off with just kind of a general view on how big data science, big data analytics, um, you know, what influence that's having, having on marketing and how it's changing uh, marketing. Well, what big data analytics is is really doing for for marketing is is greatly uh, increasing the granularity, the rate, and the scale um, uh, with which it's possible to perform marketing. Um, it's changing the level of measurability. It's increasing the measurable impact on business performance that marketing can have, or at least it's giving new insight on the impact on business performance that uh, marketing can have. And it's also, um, kind of through a closed feedback loop, providing very rich uh, new insights to marketers in how their customers actually behave and respond. And so that, in turn, is actually allowing you know, closed loop refinement and continual improvement of the marketing process on a much shorter uh, time frame than has previously been possible. OK. Um, so tell us how big data marketing works. Um, so the way uh, big data really marketing um, really works is there are a few kind of key um, uh, parts to the process. There's target definition, essentially uh, the lens through which you can uh, narrow down on individual customers based upon attributes of their behavior, based upon an understanding of combinations of interactions with them to which they will respond. Um, and then allowing that to be explored over time. There's experimental design, which of course is what enables that um, exploration. So part of the challenge has been um, historically one of the rate limiters essentially in the process, um, marketing process has been the marketer's ability to actually define the uh, individual A-B tests um, to allow them to test the hypotheses they have about how customers will respond. And one of the big changes that's happening is the automation and great enrichment of this experimental design process, which allows marketers to focus back on the creative elements that are key to really improving how marketing performs. And then thirdly is this measurement capability that we talked about before. You know, at the very heart, if you can define the targets, individual elements on which to um, uh, disaggregate customers, if you like, and can execute experiments, then the key is being able to measure the performance of those experiments and the response of those individuals or those targets um, in those experiments. So the measurement is key. And then the whole point of this, the end of the flow, is optimization. So what you really want to do is continually improve the performance of marketing campaigns and be able to continually shape um, the emphasis you put on different marketing strategies as the dynamics of the customer base, as the dynamics of the business evolve. And so those are kind of the four things at the heart of big data marketing. OK. So let's talk a little bit about what that means for communication service providers, uh, you know, for mob mobile operators, and, and how they can use uh, big data analytics to impact uh, their, their business performance. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the heart of this, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of been a lot of focus put um, in areas where the data is most accessible. So a lot of early work in big data analytics in the telecom space and the CSP space has been in network optimization, um, and in and, you know as a derivative of that in um, detecting customer experience events um, and enabling the response to them. And then kind of as we're now working up the tier, of course. What you really want to do is you understand how to optimize the network, and now you can understand the impacts of that optimization and other events in the network on the customer experience, is then you want to have a dynamic and adaptive um, series of interactions that go and address the customer. So what we're really seeing is this kind of layered approach. So big data analytics starting in optimizing the performance of the network, getting the most, the best ROI out of the equipment investment. Secondly, now, 
um, understanding when there are events that are impacting customer experience, and then thirdly, building upon that to have a you know a dynamic series of interactions with the customer that relate to their experience and improve their engagement. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about customer experience, uh, which you just mentioned as, as being one of those layers that's uh, that's seeing focus. So, so how do you see customer experience being informed by and and delivered through this kind of big data technology? One of the things I continually uh, continue to be amazed about. Um, in scientific marketing, and I should probably shouldn't say I'm amazed about it uh, because I've been doing this for a long time, and we and we know that this stuff works, but it never ceases to amaze me. Which is, no matter how crude the channel of interaction with the customers, and no matter how um, developed or undeveloped the market that you're interacting with them in is, customers always respond well when you can interact with them in a way that indicates that they are known. And so the key to this, you know, improving customer experience and delivery through this technology is really enabling you to know the customer and interact with them in a way that indicates that you do. So essentially what this means is you can have every interaction with them in context, so you can address the bad, the bad network experience, the, the video session buffering event that took a long time and so on. You can incent the good, the things that you actually desire out of the customer, and that actually are related for the customer to things that they enjoy doing or causes them to engage strongly with your service. And you know it, it's a really great um, experience for the customer when you treat them like they're known and you interact with them continually in context. And I think that's the, the revolution that this is bringing about. And it's not confined to just um, the most developed markets. Perhaps we think we know the most about the customer. It's as true in undeveloped markets as it is in developed. Just the channels with which you engage with customers are different and perhaps less sophisticated. Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay, so so let's talk about results. Um, you know, what kind of results are operators seeing in terms of um, mm. their KPIs? So um, typically, well, one of the first things is that the KPIs, when you have big, big data marketing capability and have this improvement in um, experimental design and measurability, the KPIs that you actually can look at tend to be different. So it's, much, it's very common today to look at campaign response rates. Um, and of course, at the same time, it's easy to design campaigns that are easy and for customers to respond to because they you know, give away too much or they over insert and so on. And so what that means is that it has a sh looks like it has a short-term positive effect but it cannibalizes the long-term KPIs that operators are really interested in impacting. And so what we find particularly is that, you know, because we're able to measure the effect of a marketing campaign um, on long-term KPIs like uh, one month, two month, three month uh, recognized revenue from a customer, multi-month retention of the customer, and then adapt marketing campaigns to those KPIs, that actually means that you can directly associate in-based marketing that's kind of typically viewed as a sunk cost because the measurability is generally so poor. You can actually now attach that from set to saying, wow, here is the top line impact on our business. And the sort of results that we get and we experience our customers getting is, you know, they get a month or more's worth additional revenue per year out of their customer base wow. and 10% plus relative impacts in customer retention in markets that are, tend to be, and situations that tend to be very high churn. Hmm. Wow. OK. Um, so there's a lot of buzz in the market right now, I'd say, around big data, big data analytics, uh, and, and how all of that relates to marketing. There are a ton of businesses who are really trying to figure out you know, how to put these things together in a way that really produce results for operators. Uh, so, so given that state of the market, uh, how does Globus differentiate itself? Oh, that's a great question, Kelly. There are a few dimensions um, on which that's the case, and I would revert back to um, the, your first question, uh, impacting granularity, rate, and scale of, of marketing interaction. So how do we make that concrete? We have a very unique representation of the customer that we use, moving away from the IDW. The customer is a row that updates every time your IDW update in a very slow sort of way actually represent the customer through a timeline-like representation of every transaction, every interaction that they've had with the, with the carrier, whether that's usage, whether that's marketing, whether that's top-up, 
whether it's response to a marketing interaction, whether it's a new device purchase or a plan change, we keep that as a complete timeline um, representation of the behavior of the customer. And what that actually allows us then to do is to generate a marketing capability that reacts and responds as quickly as the customers themselves react and respond, not on an artificial timeline of the update of the IDW or the attribute sensitivity in the IDW. So that's key. And what that allows us to do um, from a measurability perspective is because we see the changing customer behavior very quickly, it allows us actually to test many more things. Not because we uh, message the customer much more frequently, but we actually can detect and learn the response and the outcome of interactions with the customer much more quickly. And so we go from where, and we take our customers from where they're perhaps running 10, maybe 100 uh, marketing campaigns or campaign strategies um, in their customer base on a monthly basis to tens of thousands of possible interactions that they're running. So the, the scale is, you know, two or three orders of magnitude increase in the rate at which you can explore and learn about customer behavior. And then, as we talked about already, because you can you learn and optimize for top-line business KPIs rather than response, you actually have this direct measurability. And because we have this rich experimental design capability, you can drill down into these tens of thousands of interactions that you could possibly have with the customer and actually see at a super granular level you know, what works and what doesn't, and then optimize to those things over time. And then, of course, because all of this sophistication is being brought to, brought to bear um, on the customer base, there's a, you know, a large variety of behavioral insights that we deliver to the marketers and make available to the BI teams at the carriers about the customer base that previously they wouldn't be able to see because we're basing them off this very unique representation of the customer data that we have. Okay, great. So when you talk about that kind of scale and, and sophistication, um, I'm wondering, you know, what do carriers, what do operators need to do in order to transition to that uh, you know, that kind of system, that kind of technology, that, that kind of a really a, a point of view uh, on the customer and, and the data. Yeah, so there's definitely a cultural shift that comes from um, employing these sorts of big data marketing capabilities because the key is to, you know, of solving the experimental design problem, of solving the optimization problem, of solving the target definition problem. The purpose of that is actually to take away the burden of experimental design and, and uh, campaign management, if you like, from the marketer and allow them to focus on creative aspects of marketing, on embedding as many um, message languages, uh, message wordings, offer in, and incentive types and um, uh, offer requirements in a creative way as possible to allow as many as possible uh, of the hypotheses that the marketer has in their mind to be brought to bear. But to do that, you kind of have to have this cultural shift in the business. One is, is this shift that now in-based marketing is measurable. It's not a sunk cost activity. And, you know, performance and response can be, you know, very precisely measured and very granularly measured. So there's this new sense of it's a little bit threatening that you can actually see how successful is the creativity of the marketer and how successful is the investment in interaction with the customer base. So there's a shift to this being results and analytics driven. But there's also this shift that the marketer doesn't have to design the science of executing the results. They can focus on being creative. And then the other uh, key challenge is this you know, new way of buying, which is where the marketer is becoming a technology consumer, um, a, a technology customer in the CSP business. And what that means is a much closer relationship is needed with IT because, you know, to really get the benefits of these big data marketing capabilities, you have to have a deep integration with into the carrier's enterprise architecture. And as I talked about, if you don't want to, if you want to have a data representation that goes beyond the IDW, that means you have to be able to integrate into the data sources behind that IDW in the enterprise architecture. And to do that, of course, the great thing is because the results are so measurable, you can see the ROI from that and demonstrate that. But it means there has to be a much more synergistic relationship between IT. That's kind of view, normally viewed as a technology buyer based upon a features checklist. And the marketer who's now able to buy based upon the ROI that they can deliver. 
Well, I, th I think IT is everywhere right now. <laughs> uh, it's, it's becoming uh, ever more important to all aspects of the business. So, all right. Um, so I've been talking with Dr. Oli Downs, Chief Scientist for Globus. Thank you so much for your time today and the conversation. Thank you, Kelly. I very much enjoyed it.